Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark Spencer. With me is Steve Martin. And today we are continuing our discussion of Fonica Pro 10.0.6, the new update and features in the new update. And we've talked about how these features extend across the entire editorial workflow from import editing, effects, audio to output. So Steve, you're going to talk to us today a little bit about... Output. Output. Yeah. Okay, kind of the, the end of the chain, the when you get to actually see what you made. Right. Now you want to share your creation with you the world. You want to share your... Ah, sharing. Okay. Share. That, that's in fact that's what okay. it is. It's, it's sharing. want to share So share, sharing is not new. There's a share menu in Final... That's a, Wait a minute. What? Where'd the share menu go? Oh. Uh, there is no share menu. There's no more. There's no more sharing. No, there is. So, so they've decided that uh, sharing is is not happening anymore. You can no longer share your project. Correct? You, no, that's not true. They just moved it. They, oh, they, they moved they, it. They, okay. they just moved it to a new place. Okay. So there's no share menu to be sure. Um, you access the share menu now. This little button down here, the far left, uh, of the far right of the okay. toolbar. Okay. Show, show share, share destinations. destinations. Okay. So you bring that up, and you have a little window. That actually shows you your, what's default your default destination. So these okay. are Apple considers these kind of the more the common destination targets that you. Sure, would you want to go to Facebook or Vimeo or YouTube, or you want to do some Apple device. Correct. Or a master file is that if you want to like use the in some other application or something. Or no, master file simply it would be akin to Final Cut Pro's previous export QuickTime movie, where it okay. would take your timeline and export it in the codec and the frame rate uh, of your actual project. So like a full resolution, full self-contained resolution. movie. That's if right. you then wanted to compress that or throw it into After Effects or something or yeah. do something else, it's with a master it. okay. file. Master file. Okay. okay. So one thing I want to point out is the same menu exists well here and that also exists in the actual file menu, and sometimes... You want to click over the left-hand oh, side yeah. of that guy. So, over here in the file menu, there's the same um, uh, destination menu. Let me share, file, file share. Yeah, where's share? Oh, there is. See, there is a share menu. Yeah, there is. It's there's just a share there. menu. There used to be a share one up top. Right, they just they moved it. put it down, okay. okay. So, one thing, one other point is, if you want to make adjustments to your destinations or any of these targets, you go to the add destination, it brings up the... Oh, window. so it's fully configurable. You're not just th those particular ones. You can make anything you want. Right. Like, for example, if you don't like the order, for whatever reason, you're just always going to Facebook, you may want that to be at the top. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, and then may maybe you're doing a lot of stuff with, you know, HTTP live streaming, which, in other words, you're creating a little uh, server scenario where you're streaming out movies to different iDevices and websites. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you might, you can just add that. So it's fully, you can fully customize it by just going to the Add Destination pane and then dragging things in here. Okay. But, what I, but I, what I, you know, that's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's not rocket science. You just yes. boom, and then that yeah. shows up on the menu. But what, I, but what is very cool is this new feature called Bundles, which allows you to set up a multi-destination target. So in other words, let's say you work with a client, and the client typically likes, well, is going to be viewing uh, the rough cut on maybe an iPad. Uh, maybe some people are going to want to see it on a DVD. Maybe some people want to see it, you know, um, on a, a, over the... On Vimeo or oh, one Vimeo, of these, one exactly. these sites. Exactly. Okay. You can set it up so that when you export, it exports all these movies in one fell swoop. So it's kind of like a batch export that you say, take this one movie and send it out to three, four, five That's right. different places at once. That's right. In fact, because we live in a, in a world now where you're not just delivering to one place anymore. It's, right. it's, you're just delivering to a, a, a spectrum. So how do, you, how do you do that? Oh, it's pretty simple. A couple of ways, actually. One is, let's say I want to do uh, a Vimeo. I love Vimeo. So Vimeo, and you want to, let's say, make uh, you know HTTP streaming and maybe an Apple device is 1080p. You, are you command just, selecting those? Let me, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm sorry. I'm com Good point. I'm command selecting these. Okay. okay. And um, I'm going to go ahead and control click, and I'm going to say new bundle from selection. Ah. Okay, and that's the fastest way to create a bundle. So it took everything that would normally appear in the menu and threw them all into, into a bundle, a bundle okay. right here. So I can I can even name this, you know, my client um, who never pays exports, <laughs> right? Okay, so I got my client okay. exports. Yep. So now I what I want to do is I select these, I'll see the individual settings for each one as I click on them. There's my Vimeo settings. Uh, and then okay. you can override them. You could, you could choose new settings here by uh, using this, this pop-up over here. Apple devices, uh, you have your settings right here. Point is, when you close the window and then you access via the uh, destination um, bent button, you'll see My Client Exports. Okay. So when I select this now as an option, uh, that window will come up with all my export targets here. How do I know they're all here? Because there's a little arrow you can quickly 
toggle through them and you can see uh, each so the, one. The bottom left, it shows all the different uh, options that are in that bundle. Correct. Can, like you, can you still adjust them at this point? Yes, you can. Like Apple devices, if you, you can see a little a summary of everything that's going to be export for this. 1920, 29, you know, 97, stereo. It uh, yep. tells you the duration, the duration and even the, co the, the codec. codec. But and, really, and how big. And how that's, big. That's really key, right? Actually estimated. Estimated, okay. But what's even more, what's cooler is the fact that when you roll over the devices, it'll tell you what uh, hardware it's compatible Wait, with. Wait, so you just you just kind of uh, moused over that and, yeah. it, and it popped up? And it popped up and you see, oh. And it shows exactly what it's going to work on. Exactly. Because Whoa. this is a 1080, it'll only work on third generation. Okay, or like won't work on an iPhone 4 because it doesn't support 1080. Correct. Okay, but you can see this right away and, and know, okay, is that really what I want? And if not, you could change it to something yeah, else? Yeah, you can go into the settings button and then override them. Like here, uh, let's say, well, you know what, I really need to make this more compatible with more devices. I'm going to select this uh, this Apple device, this 1280 by, by 720. 720. Okay. Now, now watch this. When I roll over, Look at that. I also know it's kind of glowed. Um, yeah, it glows. Yellow it's, for a second there. It glows there. yellow saying you change your settings. You change your settings. Wah, wah, yeah. Wah. Okay, now, oh, I see. Now it's compatible with iPhone 4, iPad, iPhone 5, iPads. Okay. All, all iPads, uh, not uh, first it's gotta get the, It's got to get the new, uh, the new iPad uh, 4 in there. They're, they're going to be updating this. iPad mini, yeah, probably. So the point is, is that there's all your targets right yep, there. Yep, right there. Okay, and you just made a, a quick change. It makes it makes it really, really simple. Really handy to be able to see what you're doing yep. before you do it. Now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click next, and uh, and of course it's going to um, ask me for my video sign pass, in. sign yeah. in, what have you. Um, just to keep things simple, because I'm not going to sign in video and wait for it all to upload. That would be um, kind of a drag. I'm just going to do a simple uh, target test. I'm just going to pick. I'm just going to pick uh, Apple devices 720. But okay. I want to point out, if you did a bundle, it would then export all of those targets out in one fell swoop. And yeah. upload anything anything and that's on the site, it, it, it puts it up for you. Automatically upload done. to okay. YouTube, video, Vimeo, or, 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 or Facebook. And you can choose whether those uploads are public or private or, or private, whatever. Yeah. So you well, can do all that. You don't have to go to the site to set all those things up. Yeah, you do it right here. Yeah, and it's and done. You can even tag them, but we'll cover that later. Okay. Okay, but last thing is I want to show you if I was going to share this, uh, this is the most important uh, this is the most important thing is that when you go to the background task by hitting command nine, you'll see that now it's, it's, it shows up in the background task window as it's exporting. This is huge, because now oh. you can continue working while this is chugging away in the background. In previous version of Final Cut, you're waiting. You're waiting. It's locked. It's basically you're locked out while that's going on. That's right. But now it's a background task, so you can keep doing whatever you're doing. Just okay. keep, keep right, right on working, and that's working in the background. So Beautiful. I can actually actually go in here, and uh, I can, can you know continue trimming, editing, doing what have you, even yeah. on the same project that I'm exporting. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> so, if you make changes to this project while it's exporting, but, but it's exporting, it kind of took a picture of that state yes, before you did. started? Uh -huh. Okay, so the exact same project that you're exporting, if you know you wanted to do different versions of it, you could literally make changes to it while it's exporting. Right. And, right, and wow. you'll, even, you'll even get a warning. <laughs> like, here, you're saying, you, you can because if, if those changes, like you'll see a little warning sign saying there's, there is a delta or difference between what you're working on and what I exported and what last you exported. time. exported. Okay, yeah. that's what that little guy yeah. does. Yeah, that's what that little guy does. Yeah. And then you can also, um, you know, you can also see uh, kind of a list of what, I, I, it's not going to see it when it's done, but when it's done, you go to the inspector and actually see a history of what you've exported. Ah, uh, okay. But we're not going to be able to see that until it finishes exporting. Well, we could, we could stand here and just chat for a while. Well, let's, let's wait <laughs> for it to export. Okay, beautiful. So, new sharing feature where you have destinations mm -hmm. and bundles. Yes. Fantastic. Much, much easier to deal with and very easy to figure out. Great. Steve, thank you. Um, more information you can find, as usual, at rippletraining.com, including tutorials on everything that's new with your in-depth tutorial, right. or the Apple Pro Video series for the entire, covers the entire app if you're brand new to Final Cut Pro 10. Thank you, Steve. It's good to be here. Thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.